stormed the field. We tore up some sod. I still, 15 years later, had a chunk of sod from the end zone of that game. And uh, we, we tore down the goalposts. Well, I'm a sophomore in college. I was 18, 19 years old. I was an idiot. So naturally, I'm climbing on the goalpost, despite the fact that I'm a golfer and my body is pretty much the reason why I'm able to go through college. I decided to jump on the goalpost and also like idiots, we marched the goalpost four miles around the city of Knoxville and eventually, like idiots, also decided to dump said goalpost in the Tennessee River because that seemed like the logical place to throw a goalpost. They float, don't worry. And so we, uh, about a week later, four or five days later, whatever, uh, the new Sports Illustrated comes out. And sure enough, that next morning, I get called to my coach's office at six o'clock. That was a great wake up call. Six o'clock in the morning, I get called to my coach's office and he slams down the Sports Illustrated and he says, what is that? And I look at it and I go, sir, that seems to be a celebratory video of our esteemed university beating the University of Florida, our arch rivals. And he says, no, who is that? And I said, sir, that seems to be a student who matriculates here at the University of Tennessee celebrating said victory. He says, <laughs> he interrupts me, he says, that's you, isn't it? I said, well, yes, sir, it seems to be me. And my parents, you know, typical American story, sadly. My parents divorced when I was two. Uh, I grew up with a single mom. She worked three jobs to to keep us on the right side of the tracks, but I could see the tracks from my bedroom window. Um, my mom never made more than $38,000 in a year. You know, I helped her do her taxes her last her last year of working, and that was the most she'd ever made. You know, never made more than $38,000 a year. Like, we... I know what that's like, you know, but she kept us there where, you know, I never missed a meal. Like I never went to bed hungry. Uh, I might've eaten macaroni and cheese and hot dogs seven straight days, but I never went to bed hungry. You know, I never had the luxuries, but we always had, you know, at least basic television, <laughs> you know, and electricity. Yeah. And I always had my own bed. It, it was never raised up, but it was, I had one, you know? Uh -huh. And, um, and then, you know, oddly enough, when I was nine, uh, I never really know my dad, you know, really at all that I, in fact, I actually did weird thing, you know, and I, this is something I, I will admit, like I've been through counseling for stuff like this. I don't remember ever seeing my dad before the age of nine. I know wow. that I okay. did. I've heard other people have told me that he was there for this and he was there. I don't remember it. And, and it's very weird when you think about that, like, how do you not remember talking to your dad on the phone? I don't How do you not remember getting in the car with your dad and spending three days? I don't remember it. You know, I even remember going to visit him for a week when I was seven. I, we went down to Orlando where he was at at the time. He worked at a golf course down there. I remember going to Disney. I remember going to Epcot. I remember going to the pool with my grandmother. I remember the train ride down there. I do not remember ever seeing him. But when REM, the band REM, signed what was then the biggest record contract in history with, I believe, Sony, there's a mm -hmm. picture of them. And in the front row, as it looks over the, their shoulders, is me with a basket of cheese fries at Pinehurst Country Club <laughs> going like this. <laughs> Stuffing of cheese fry into my mouth. It was nothing for me to be there with REM because I was used to that because of my dad. That was the best part of his time was playing golf with the members being involved and helping them to improve and he realized that he's like great i made my money you know i made a lot of money i'm financially secure for the rest of my life now i got to go do my pat my passion and you know how i learned to be a leader uh sucking as a leader <laughs> and being a moron but also reading and you know 50 to 100 leadership books and applying principles and 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 learning how to do it. i was i was not a born leader leader. So that's the, the first mindset shift. And then the second thing is this, like, you know, the whole premise of my book, turn your passions into profit hinges on one belief. And that is the world needs your message. Mm 